coming up this week on Stage to the Cage. We're obviously 10 days out, 10 days out from the fight, and the journey's over. It's been a long journey. So I, I landed a very lucky spinning back first as we were, as we were breaking. I call it the bastard right. back first now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special move. But I've had fun. You're all right. You got another one. You won't be grappling them. You won't get hold of me. So there's going to be no grappling. And if it does grapple, I'm like a bear. Paul's not been training for nothing. He's about it. You don't message scouts. Hey, it's just all reality talk, show in no All back, no yeah. bite. Fighting some <laughs> off the X Factor and a fucking hairs his head off. Little He's bigger than me as well, but I don't give a fuck. I'm going to fucking bite him. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Jake Quickenden versus Paul Smith. The fight we never knew we wanted in our lives is now just days away. Everybody knows these guys, but nobody ever pictured them as opponents, as rivals, as two fighters who would put each other's skills to the test in a cage fight. But here we are. When you look at them as opponents, the natural thing to do is to look at the differences between them. Their height, their physique, fighting styles, backgrounds, personalities. But when I look at them, especially after following them through this series and on this journey, I see so many similarities. Professionally, both have carved their own place in a world which many struggle for 15 minutes of fame, yet alone a career's worth. Personally, both are family men, driven to be better, to be role models, and to inspire their children. Both give their all to absolutely anything they set their minds to. Both have been through hard times, and both have had and continue to have their battles with mental health. And after 10 months of training, both truly believe that they can beat each other. end of this series, Stage to the Cage, will not be the end of their journey though. When this show finishes, we will still be days away from the fight on November 4th, and these guys will have the hardest part of this whole preparation still to come. They will have to make weight and hit that welterweight limit of 77.6 kilograms. Both started at over 90 kilograms when they began their preparation. Huge questions have been asked if they will even be able to make that weight. And on Fight Week, Octagon MMA and their team will put out a vlog on their YouTube channel that will follow that part of the journey and that will give us the answer to those questions when they step on that scale on November 3rd. Then, on November 4th, in the AO Arena in Manchester, we will get the answer to the final question. will handle that moment best, who will make that dream come true, and who will be the winner. Jake Quickenden or Paul Smith. Yeah, so we're just a few weeks off, so we're, we're coming close to um, one of his last sparring sessions now with, uh, with a couple of lads. Getting a fighter to listen to the coach is one of the uh, hardest, hardest things to do. It's like imperative for a fighter because they're obviously responding to your experience as a coach and the ability to respond to, to your coach is important because you're seeing things from a different perspective. Last time. We sparred Paulie for a right hand straight in the chest. Stuck the nut on me and then shot a double. I was very impressed. It's all about using your head. <laughs> so <top set. laughs> For the first few, I was like, dreading it for days. Going, oh God, I'm gonna have to go and spar. I don't wanna go and spar. And then I was coming back trying to think of excuses to like not go and spar. <laughs> Should have come down to him. Looking healthy, that Paul. Been very hydrated there. That's the secret to black lads, mate. Drink our own piss. Secret to success. That's what that's what we tell Lewis. 
<laughs> said, yeah, Lewis, we all drink our own piss in here. He's like, do we? Yeah, yeah, just keep going. You've been for all these years, it's been a lie. Kicking the balls against that. Oh, fuck, man. As I said last time, a lot of people are underestimating me, but because you look at my body to his body and you think, fucking hell, he's, he's a monster, but. All those muscles need oxygen, mate. Yeah. 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 Give that pressure, Tommy Paul. Where's that back at, man? Pressure, stay on it. Good, stay on it, stay on it, stay heavy there. Just ride him out a little. Left hook in, left hook in, left hook in. Let's go. Good. Good. That's good, that, though. That's the best round we've done, that. Yeah. By a mile. It's getting like. It's getting like a proper spare, that now. Really good. Happy. Spinning back from something good. I know, yeah. <laughs> fucking, fucking ironed out. Give that jab, Paul. Let's go. Leave it all here. Good, Loki. Pop that jab, Paul. Get up on that fence, please. Good, lad. Push his head to his back. Good, good lad. Go, Paul. Keep out of his face. Keep out of his face. He's just great at pressuring forward, you know. Using that gas tank, he's fucking, he's built up now. Um, pressure straight forward, very top heavy when he gets on top of you, especially against the cage. And then when we break, then low kicks come in and absolutely kill your leg off. Good work, boys. Up you get, Paul. Walk it off, lad. Good lad. But I've had my fun. You're all right. You've got another one. <laughs> did it surprise you at the back fist? Yes, it did. <laughs> I was there laughing with that. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were all doing outside. What's that? That's what we were all doing outside when he hit you with it. <laughs> yes! Fucking get him! Get him! Get him. <laughs> his like, fist. If, if I had to put you down with that, that video would be on YouTube right already. <laughs> <laughs> Right, the show. I've worked for fucking hard for a year on this, so yeah, I just want to put a show on for people and now these are all there to watch or watch online. Bro, I've just finished. Ah, ah. I'm just doing my journaling. Mate, I've got man flu bad. You don't want to come here. Um, it's like a cave. It's literally like a cave. Does it smell? It smells like breath, doesn't it? I just finished my journaling and then... I mean, yesterday I was a total and utter write-off. I couldn't even get out of bed. Um, man flu hit me hard. Why does man flu get men more than it does women? If Soph had this, she'd be, she'd be up with the kids, doing all the bits, I can't, I can't move. I've had cold and flu, lem sips, I've drank about 19 litres of water. It's a bit shit that we're 10 days out from the fight and my body decides to go, you know what mate, you need a rest. Um, so yesterday as well I ate probably 5,000 calories. I had five grenade bars, that's bad isn't it? I found a little shop around the corner that do the white white Oreos. Um, but yeah, I've just finished my my gratitude now list is a new day, my beautiful family, the ability to heal body and mind, a place to lay my head, and becoming one one percent better each day, and my gratitude intentions to continue to provide opportunities, my first MMA win, back to 100% health, a baby daughter and uh, more work, but balance with time with my family. So that's what I've wrote today in my journal. And now, I've got to sleep, because I'm back on tonight, back doing the show tonight. Did you do the show last night? I had to have uh, the night off last night. So you couldn't perform? I couldn't get out of bed, which is unlike me, because um, I hate having time off. So I'm gonna pull myself together, drink some water, eat some food and we're going to perform tonight and give the best performance I can um, but yeah this is rotten man 
this illness is rotten. I like these as well. On each page, the best life has to give is mine now. That's right. The best life has to give is your life right now, in the moment. We all strive to like be better or we look what happened in the past, but right now is the best you are. You can't change that. So right now I'm feeling a bit shit, but I'm still here. And there's plenty of people that are in a worse situation than I am. Tomorrow's is, I am so grateful that my body is creating perfect health and harmony. That's mad, isn't it? How's that tomorrow's? <laughs> so hopefully tomorrow, perfect health and harmony, I'm back in the game. That's mad. That's actually blowing my mind. Not me. I actually, when I went to get um, some cold and flu tablets at the petrol station, I walked in and a guy was buying a coffee and he went, I've been watching you. I went, oh, oh I, on what? He went, stage the cage. I couldn't believe it. He was like, it's wicked, mate. He's like, keep up the hard work. And, I, and it was a geezer as well, it was a guy. And I was like, oh, that's fucking sick. Like, sweet. Hello, you okay? Hello. Is it Paul's that got in much? Yeah. You watch it? No. Did he win? We're going to draw for the no submissions. I think. Good on him. Preparing. He won't be grappling though. He won't get hold of me. So there's going to be no grappling. And if it does grapple, I'm like a bear. Not right now, I'm like a fucking. I'm like a Care Bear right now, but usually I'm like a Grizzly. Do you remember Care Bears? Care Bears in your pocket. Fucking can't wait for it to be over though. I'm so hungry. I've already ordered some food for after the show, for after the fight. I've ordered four big trays of brownies. And then I'm going to have a German Donner Kebab. I'm going to have some cheesy fries, like, with, like loaded fries. And I'm going to have a bag and bucket KFC. Uh, and that'll just be starter. And then we'll just see where we go from there. And then I can't wait, can't wait to get up for breakfast and have like a breakfast with my missus the night, the, the day after. Hopefully I'm not like bruised and battered and I can get up and have a fry up. We're obviously 10 days out, 10 days out from the fight. Got the cut to go, which is going to be brutal. I've never done a cut before, and I think that's something that I'm quite looking forward to because a lot of people that YouTube reality stars that fight, they never really do a cut. They just fight at a catch weight. So me and Paul are doing it proper because we're doing a cut. So um, we've got that, and then I'm just excited now to get in there. And I don't know how the fight's going to go. Anything can happen in MMA. You can be winning for 14 minutes and get caught for the last one. That's the beauty of the beauty of the sport and what I've realised through the training so I'm just going to go in as prepared as possible hopefully this last 10 days now I can get my body feeling right and I've put in the work, nobody can take that away from me, I've put in the work and as has Paul um, so I'm looking forward to seeing you in there buddy let's put on a nice show let's both get home healthy and happy to our families that's what it's all about, we've done it the journey's over it's been a long journey um, but it's something that I'll never forget. When I tape up those little four ounce gloves and the cage door shuts behind me, all that work that I've done, I've left no stones unturned and we're gonna go in there, hopefully get the W. But if we don't, then only lessons, no losses. I said that at the beginning of the show and I'll say it at the end, only lessons. It's not meant to be, it's not meant to be but you don't let these little setbacks stop you. I'll continue to move forward. And I've got a lot, a lot to be happy about. I've got a beautiful family, I've got good friends. I've made new friends. Um, yeah, and if you want to follow me and Paul and all the other amazing athletes and sportsmen that are on Octagon, then follow Octagon and follow Octagon UK and Ireland and support the guys, man, because there's nothing like this sport. There's nothing like this sport. Let's have a good night in Manchester, November the 4th. Namaste. See you on fight night.
Yeah. Paul's not been training for nothing, he's about it. You don't mess with scouts. Jake, Jake, Jake might be a bit all talk, you know, so. That's it. Yeah, that's is it really? Jake's it's just all reality talk, show into it. Paul Bark, not bite. Paul is about, about it. it. Yeah. Is this what it's like in every city? Every city, mate. Queuing around the block? Yeah. So these, these are minor queues compared to some of the main ones. <laughs> Front. <laughs> Why? He might um, might pick on us oh, yeah. to ask questions, make some jokes. <laughs> yeah. It's always the best seats in the house, though, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely yeah. by a mile. Have you been to a Paul Smith show before? Never. No, we've watched First him. Time. Watched but him for watched him on Facebook. ages and TikTok. Um, yeah. Hot water comedy, but never actually seen him, have we? <laughs> Exciting. That's right. We are in the O2 Academy in Leeds doing another sold out show for Paul's Joker tour. Um, this, I think this is the, I wanna say the fifth or sixth time we've played this venue. Um, it's typically a music venue, so the room acoustically is very good and um, we always have good shows here. And we always get good crowds from here and because it's a Wednesday night, I think it's gonna be quite a tame one to be honest. It's not gonna be a, la a Larry one, although, Looking at some of the audience that me and Josh have been looking at, I could could be swayed. So we'll see. That guy in the orange jacket is definitely getting it. That's all. That's all. Now, do you want to see what I've got on my feet? Don't take the piss out of it. I've got Moroccan, Moroccan, Moroc Macrocans. <laughs> got a hole in them. <laughs> you locked out your own shit. Locked you out. Locked out. Okay, now. Get that. You're just fucking stupid. Do you see shit? I feel like it's a crease. Is it that crease? I mean, it is the back where you sat down, but not the front. Yeah. No. Not enough to do with it. So. Well, I'll do with me. Now we can see you back. Except for you, Lisa. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna get it later. Oh. In a horrible way. I'm sure I'll have to take me back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm meant to be going to um, Ledge on Friday because I wanted to learn grappling because I want to I wanna try and beat him. At a play fight because I am quite strong, but now you just overtake me massively. Now I'm just not never gonna technique over strength, just, everyone. Yeah, but that's what I mean. I want to learn the techniques. I want to I mean, learn te to be fair. I've seen you throw him across a room onto strong. a hotel bed. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Whoa, what were you filming? Yeah. <laughs> you don't it wasn't sexual, <laughs> <laughs> maybe to some people, but <laughs> definitely not intentional. It was intentional. It was intentional, but not <laughs> sexual intention. Smash me thumb today. Go on, Lucy's it's not bad, would it? It's, 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 it's not, it's not, not that I can't wear it around, but it's like, not bending properly. It's just there. What's that other guy's name you're fighting? Uppercut. Yeah, Jake. Just put a bet on him. <laughs> 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 So I, I landed a very lucky spinning back first as we were, as we were breaking, and if if you make the, if you make too much of it, he's gonna hurt me when I go back to jail. He's gonna prepare for you. He won't have to time. prepare. He just won't go easy on me. <laughs> oh, so you're admitting that he goes easy on you. I would imagine if I cause a spinning back first. He said he wasn't, but like I don't know if he's going easy on me. Oh, I said it sounds like a second move. It, well, so you've told Laurie about it already, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not, not going on about it. He's not shut up about it. Sorry, Lou. Bragging. I call it the bastard bragging. backfist now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special move. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Paul Smith Joker. Please go wild and crazy for Paul Smith! Some off the X Factor, gonna fucking hez his head off, little prick. 
fucking cheeky little thinking he can fucking fight me. He's bigger than me as well, but I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna fucking bite him. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 Fuck's What's your name? Jordan. Jordan. Why are you just the mouth because your voice just got... Jordan, you are. Why are you just on a pew cracker? How old are you, Jordan? Thirty. Fuck off. Don't lie to me. You're not. I was going to say, fucking shit yourself, then. <laughs> that nonce would have had you there. <laughs> when he said he was 30, and I was like, nah, because part of me believed him. <laughs> and I thought, no, fucking way. But, um, yeah. Yeah, to me, he was just... He was, I find it weird that so, he's so made up. Like, when I called him a tit for doing that with his fucking... Because as soon as I mentioned his chain, he went... And tried to make himself look harder by yeah. like pushing his fucking hand behind his face. And <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? He says, and he was like, ah! He was definitely filming me on his phone as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking being a base of him, isn't he? It's a bit of a shit. So he's going to be like that. It's because I stink as shit, that's what it's going to be. It's going to stink as shit, mate. So I'm a grappler, I'm just going to start poking into his leg. Oh, can you feel that? <laughs> can you feel it? What a journey this has been. I've said it a thousand times away from the camera, but I will say it here as well. I am so proud of both these men. Not only for the dedication that they have shown, but also to how they have represented the sport of mixed martial arts. How they have shown the beauty of it, the benefits it brings, the work it takes, and also how they have shone a light on the amazing community of people that are part of this world. The question that I get asked most about this show is who do I think will win? On November 4th, yes, one will win and one will lose, but this show, this project for us and for them has been about more than that. This project has been about the journey, about showing people what is possible, what is possible if you dedicate yourself to something, if you dare to take yourself outside your comfort zone, and if you dare to test yourself in a way that 99.9% .9 of humans never will. Despite all these guys have given, despite all they have shown us on this series in preparation for this fight, and because of who they are in the world of celebrity, there are and there will still be people who will make comments about them, who will judge them for even daring to do this. Martial arts is beautiful and you will be surprised at just who it has inspired. Theodore Roosevelt. The ex-president of the United States, trained in judo, trained in wrestling and trained in jiu-jitsu. He has a very famous speech, a speech called The Man in the Arena. And as much as I like to think that I could articulate what this journey and what November 4th will mean, I think his speech says it all. It's not the critic who counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or whether the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error or shortcoming, but who actually does strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring to be great, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. We have our arena, the AO Arena in Manchester, we have our two men, Jake and Paul, and win or lose, we will see two men who have dared to be great.